my name is James, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Andy Accessibility Checker and learning how to use it. Now, before we jump in and get the Andy Accessibility Checker on our website, I do want to take a moment to note that accessibility checking tools or scanners are not perfect and that they are not able to test and check for every possible accessibility issue. So these are really just good for getting a baseline and beginning with the first steps towards making your website more accessible. So they are not a complete solution, but they are good for getting started and getting things up and off the ground. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get to the Andy Accessibility Checker website. You can Google Andy Accessibility, or you can go to the URL down in the description to get to the tool. Um, so Andy is a book bookmarklet or something that you add to your toolbar that runs when you activate it up here in the, the taskbar. So Andy is available on Chrome, Edge, and a, a few other browsers. I'm currently using it on Chrome. And the way you get it added to that bar is simply to click this pink button and drag it up and drop it in. I already have it up here, so I'm not gonna do that. But on this page, you can get a little bit more detail on how Andy works and you can get actually installation help for Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Safari. You can get instructional videos like this one on how to launch Andy. And then you can get some more information on uninstalling, updating, and the open source of GitHub. So the next thing you want to do is navigate over to your website and the page within your website that you want to check with Andy. And it, when you click it up in your taskbar, it will open Andy and you have a drop down of all of the different things that Andy can check for, uh, including focusable elements, graphics, images, links and buttons, structures, color contrast, and even hidden content. So as you move through the tabs, it will check them all pretty quickly. And then over here off to the right, it will actually tell you if there's any issues. So on so here it's saying that I have some issues with my skip to content button not being in the tab order. This is a prime example of where these tools are not always the most accurate because it actually is. Um, it's just picking this up and calling it out as an alert. And for us, this would be something we would wanna double check in something like a manual test. What's cool about Andy is you do have these next and previous buttons so you can actually go through each element that it's checking and it will give you some information about that element and how it would sound to assistive technologies and what that output might look like. As we click through these, I currently don't have any issues when it comes to graphics or images, no issues when it comes to links or buttons, um, no structural issues. Um, it's most likely always going to call out color contrast issues and it will tell you if it thinks that a manual test is necessary. So here it's telling me that there's a couple things that it's recommending to check out or to explore uh, with a manual test to make sure that the color contrast ratios meet the minimum requirement. And then lastly, with hidden content, it's calling out a CSS issue using pseudo classes, but not really anything major there. So uh, to, off to the right, we do have settings and help and keyboard shortcuts and just the X to close Andy. And you can use this on generally any page um, on the web just to get an idea on where it's starting at baseline from an accessibility standpoint. So again, we can go through all of these tabs over here and check to see if we have any issues with focusable elements, graphics and images, links and buttons, structures, color contrast, and hidden content. And that is generally how we use Andy to get a baseline on what the accessibility of a website looks like. And when we're done with it, we can just click the X and it will go away. Next video, we will 
cover and go over how to use the Wave Accessibility Checker, a very similar tool, but with a different user interface and a little bit different of an approach on how it shows and uh, describes the issues that it's detecting. Um, so stay tuned for the next one, and I will see you then.